ever found yourself being asked to do something and not fully recognizing the impact or the implications of your obedience or the lack thereof? Because you did not recognize destiny that the act of your obedience holds simply upon you completing the task. Have you ever found yourself feeling or saying within yourself, I don't know why I have to do this. This doesn't even make sense. Or perhaps you said, why I have, why have to do it this way? This seems so insignificant. And yet, after you completed the task, you realize the spiritual significance, the impact and the relevance of you performing the task, just as you have been told. Yes. Let's pray. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. Lord God, I pray, Lord God, for clarity of thought clarity of speech. I pray, Lord God, for your anointing. Lord God, that you would anoint me, Lord God, to speak only what you have given me, God. I pray that no flesh would glory in your presence. God, I pray that you will anoint the hearer. I need to anoint the ears of your people. God, that your word will have the impact, Lord God. Your word will have what you want it to do. It will do what you want it to do. You send forth your word. God, your word declares that your word will not return to you void. Accomplish that which you have for it to do today. I pray, Lord God, that you would encourage our pastors. And thus, Lord God, you would encourage us. In the name of Jesus. Sometimes we don't realize the spiritual, the spiritual significance of the task that is before us. Turn with me to 2 Kings, the 13th chapter. Thank you, Father. 2 Kings, the 13th chapter. Thank you, Lord God. Second Kings, the 13th chapter, verses 14 through 19. Now Elisha was fallen sick of his sickness, whereof he died. And Joash, the king of Israel, came down unto him and wept over him, wept over his face, and said, O oh my father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And Elijah said unto him, Take bow and arrows. And he took unto him bow and arrows. And he said to the king of Israel, Put thine hand upon the bow. And he put his hand upon it. And Elijah put his hand upon the king's hand. And he said, Open the window eastward. And he opened it. Then Elijah said, shoot, and he shot. And he said, the arrow of the Lord's deliverance and the arrow of deliverance from Syria. For thou shalt smite the Syrians in Aphek till thou hast consumed them. Verse 9, verse 18, and he said, this is the prophet, take the arrows. <coughs> And he, the king, took them. And he said unto the king of Israel, Smite upon the ground. And he smote thrice and stayed. And the man of God was wroth with him and said, Thou should have had smitten five or six times. Then hast thou smitten Syria till thou hast consumed it. Whereas now thou shalt smite serious, Syria only three times. Amen. Amen. The book of Kings, both first and second Kings, are stories about kings ruling over both Judah and Israel. We find
find here in 2 Kings a very short story of Joash, the 13th king of Israel, and Elijah the prophet, who himself was now on his deathbed. We find the children of Israel had again committed evil in the sight of the Lord, and thus the Lord used their enemies, in this case Syria, to draw his people back to him. In this story, God used the wicked nation Syria to oppress the children of Israel according to 2 Kings 13 and 7. Following a long period of suffering at the hands of the Syrians while achieving political success, Joash suffered spiritual bankruptcy, spiritual ruin, spiritual failure. In that he did evil in the sight of the Lord, he did not depart from all of the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made all Israel to sin, but they walked in their sin. Here in 2 Kings 13, we find King Joash coming to visit prophet Elijah, and according to the commentary, received the prophet's dying counsel and blessing. And in this instance, the prophet offers both. For as King Joash is weeping over the prophet's face, the prophet immediately says, take bow and arrows. I have an illustration if you will bear with me. And Lady Tiffany and Pastor, if I could use you <laughs> in this instance. <laughs> Smite 
or strike the ground. Strike the ground. Amen. Amen. That's our illustration. was to get the king to focus off the root of the problem 
was going. So likewise, in the spirit, we are to focus our vision on Christ Amen. and through him. Yes. Discern what the root of the challenge really is. Yeah. Discern the root of the problem. We are to discern what the root of the issue. Yeah. And then, therefore, shoot our arrows there yeah. and not at one another. Yeah. Every time we embark upon those church doors, we are invited to an opportunity to get out Yara, Yara. A primitive root word in its primitive root form means to flow as water. That is to rain. Transitively, it means to lay or to throw. Especially as an arrow that is to be shot. But figuratively, it means to point out, as if by aiming the finger, to teach, to direct, to inform, to instruct, to lay the foundation, to shoot and to teach. Can I say to you that every time we come into Light Builders Harvest Temple, our pastors are pointing out the right way to adhere to the promises of God. They are aiming as by the finger the direction that we need to take by the word of God. They are teaching us, informing us, and instructing us through the word of God and prophetically as the Lord leads the way that we should take providing godly and wise counsel. Can I tell you that every time you come into the building of LBHT, as you take up the arrow and the sword of the Lord, the prophet comes alongside of you. Come on, we need that illustration. The prophet comes alongside of you. Not only you as the king, but the word of God calls us king and priest unto the Lord. Amen. The prophet comes alongside of you, takes hold of your hands, and leads you on as you shoot your arrow. Hallelujah. That's 
That's why you got to make this thing personal. Hallelujah. You know what I have learned? You can call around. I've learned this is a personal lesson again. You can call all around you want to. And you can ask and you can beg and you can plead for prayer. But at the end of the day, the arrows have to come from you. You have to place your hands on the boat. And you have to want to be the one to do the shooting. You have to open up your mouth and you have to decree and you have to declare as the king. Hallelujah. Please don't make the mistake of what I'm saying. Ask for prayer. And when people ask for prayer from you, you pray. However, please know that your faith muscles are built and your faith grows and your increased spirituality and your relationship and your intimacy with God grows when he hears your voice. It's something when my daughter texts me. It's something when she sends me an email. But when she picks up the phone, I can guarantee you, it don't have to ring twice. It don't have to ring twice. And I can tell just by hearing her voice if something is wrong. And if something is right, something is good, I'm all right. As long as I hear your voice. As long as I hear your voice. You can call God wants to hear your voice. Your voice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But I hear you saying, what are my arrows? I'm glad you asked. As we do not use bow and arrow in the natural, according to the word of God, 2 Corinthians 10 verses 4 and 5. The weapons of our warfare are not kind. But they are mighty to, through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Those strongholds that exist in our minds. Those generational strongholds that may have a hold of our body. That may have a hold of our reasoning. That have a, they have a hold of the way that we perceive things. Recognizing the authority that you stand in, we realize that according to Matthew 16 and 19, as a disciple of Christ, we have the keys of the kingdom. Yes. And whatever we bind on earth is bound in heaven. And whatever we loose on earth is loose in heaven. According to Matthew 28, 18 and 19, the word says about our authority, Jesus has all authority and power in heaven and in earth. And whatever One more. Luke 10 and 19. God has given me the authority and the power. Somebody said it here this morning. To trample on serpents and scorpions. And all the power of the enemy possessed. Let me show my enemies hurt you. You've got to realize that the authority lies on the inside of you. Get it in your mouth. Get it in your heart. Use your authority to shoot your Shoot this arrow. 
Use your mouth and launch this weapon of the word of God. Deuteronomy 31 and 6 says, I am strong. I am courageous. I am firm in my mind. I'm firm in my foundation. I'm firm in the thing where God has called me to. I'm not wavering, but I'm firm and I'm settled in it. Hallelujah. And when it comes to striking the ground, go on over to Psalms 86 and 7. In the day of trouble, I will call to you, for you will answer me. Strike the ground with Matthew 6 and 31. Therefore, take no thought. Say what we shall eat or what we shall drink or what we shall eat. Yeah. <laughs> 
have a glory. What can I do? What can I? What should I do? I want the leaders to line up across the altar. Amen.